to go. Wonderful. So we are glad that we can come together. This is our last session together. It's kind of hard to believe. It's kind of it's gone fast. Um, and as we gather, I thought we'd use um, I'm going to use a song, use it responsibly for our opening prayer. So let me move some things around here so you all can see a little better. Hang on. Um, okay. Please work. Yay. <laughs> so I thought maybe for our, for their opening um, song, maybe why don't we do this? Why don't um, Cheryl, Dean, and Marcia? Why don't you all read the the the, the lines that are the, the that are not bolded, and then the rest the rest of us will read the bolded lines. Okay. So we'll kind of respond back and forth. Okay. Okay. How does that sound? Yeah. So why don't you all go ahead? Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. Amen. <clears throat> So oh, as Frank said, this is our last session together, and uh, we have gone and really looked at each individual phrase of this prayer, and today we're going to end up with, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So, you know, when I was reading the lesson, I was really kind of surprised that I had never pondered the first part of this before. Lead us not into temptation. Did, did you ever think, would God really lead me into temptation? Had that ever come to mind for you? That God would lead me, no. That I would lead me, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I guess that was just another example of um, how often we learn something about thinking about the words. So I think it's important for us to you know, wrestle with that a little bit. Um, and of course, in our lesson this week, they quickly said, as June said, no, God's not going to lead you into temptation. And they had us read James. So let's look at <clears throat> James 1. We'll start at verse 13. Marsha, would you read that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Look, you can read it from there if you want. Oh, wait. When tempted, it's saying, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own personal desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Interesting. Desire leads to sin, and sin. So, how do you think we can? Uh, how do you wrestle with these two different scriptures? We've got this, and we've got in the Lord's Prayer, "Lead us not into temptation." Soon it seems like this supports what you said, <laughs> that God isn't leading or te um, tempting us. All of our everyday activities do. I mean, we don't, very few of us get through a day that it isn't something. Now, for me, it would never be alcohol. I don't like it. You could. You know, it could sit there forever, and that would not be a temptation. I can name some things. Windows. My grandson has lived with me since he was two. Uh -huh. Now, my daughter and I try to eat. 
Christopher <laughs> has a shelf, about a six long shelf in the pantry. His own shelf. His own shelf. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's all of our shelves, shelves, but it has blades of potatoes and Fritos, candy and cookies. Now, alcohol could be there forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Christopher's shelf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do my best, mind you, to stay away from Christopher. Better than Bea, she never touches. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I couldn't need you know, it. I, I know I go in and I want, almost want to go to Christopher's shelf. <laughs> When I read the line, um, whenever I yeah, lead us not in temptation, what I was just thinking of, and I, it reminds me of the 23rd Psalm, um, where he says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, mm -hmm. um, I will not fear for you're with me. Mm -hmm. that, that image is what came to mind whenever we pray that. Um, what, who, who else? Have that's what they're tempted by. <laughs> I'm tempted by food. I couldn't stay away from Christopher's shelf. I'm sorry. <laughs> Desserts, any kind of dessert in the world uh, other than cheesecake. I do not eat lots of all the others. I ate mine and Jenny's. <laughs> so. And I like Coke too. Pepsi, <laughs> Coke, lemonade. So. I'm trying to learn to force water. And, that, and it's a force. I have to force myself. Does anybody have, are they tempted by being in control? I know someone it is. <laughs> Just remember, this has been recorded. So. <laughs> So, so once in a while, I'm tempted by it now. Yeah. It's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I thought it was helpful in our I talked about um, what the word temptation means when it was first used in a translation, and it meant to test or to prove. How do we feel tested? When you walk by the shelf. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you go to the grocery store. When you drive to and from work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When you're driving on the road. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I told Frank in my little email to him this morning, I had to send him a second PowerPoint because <laughs> I had cleaned up my computer and I deleted everything I did from yesterday. I mean, I had on my computer. <laughs> I was tested. I was really tested. And uh, thank God you gave me the patience I needed to make it through. <laughs> so I have, this is a lesson I've written twice. And I think the good one got thrown away yesterday. <laughs> so I had to start all over again. But uh, what do you think is the difference in, when you think about that terminology? What's the difference between being and being tempted in your mind? Tested feels like something I'll learn from. Tempted feels like something I'll, I probably will learn from it too, but I know that. It more like it's, I'm making a wrong choice. Mm -hmm. Whereas tested feels as if it may be something I'm living through that I mm -hmm. am not choosing. I don't know. That's what comes to mind. That makes a lot of sense. So one seems to involve more choice and the other is more like, how am I going to experience these trials? Interesting. <clears throat> um, Jesus lived through times of trials. 
and um, we'll look at slide four. Yep. We're going to look at some parts of where we talk, we read about Jesus' temptation, and we're going to think about the different parts of this story of being tempted. So I believe this is from Matthew. And um, so it starts off when Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. And it seemed to me I wanted to think about the question do you notice the timing when the devil tempts Jesus? So already hungry. He was very hungry, right? Do you feel like sometimes we have our worst trials at the worst time? You know, it seems like it comes up and we're not really prepared for it. You know. Um, no, I when they were saying in the lesson today that it's often when things are good. Mm -hmm. And I think that more me. I can handle usually the bad thing, but it's to handle what seems to be really good. Mm -hmm. The temptation is kind of hiding out in when things seem to be going so right. Or good, or they're good. Is that what you're been thinking? No. Okay. <laughs> It yet seems sometimes that that's when things come up. That um, when everything is fine and seems to be okay, you're not really looking mm -hmm. for something else to be. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes at that time, it's harder. Mm -hmm. If you're going through a bad time, then you're kind of prepared for it. Oh, I see. So I do agree with you that I think sometimes uh, I'm tempted when things seem to be going well, but it's because of my reaction to things that are going well. You know, I'm almost like, oh, I got, I must be good, you know. Uh, so it's almost like I'm feeling that I can control all this because look how good things are going. That's just my perception of, of how I'm doing it. Let's lead, read on and see what were the temptations with Jesus. Oh. <laughs> you read that, please. The, <clears throat> the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So have you ever been tempted by food and drink? I think we all have. <laughs> yeah. 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 And especially, this is especially um, meaningful to me, knowing that Jesus was had gone all that time without eating. Mm -hmm to be just starving and i'm wondering about um, that sometimes these temptations seem to come about when i'm desperate for something that maybe i don't have at the time but i said oh it's a quick fix oh yeah just let me do that real quick and i'll i'll be good a bit later on so but um the temptation was with food and then dean if you'll read the next one let's see what else the devil puts his then the devil took him to the holy and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord, your God, to the test. 
So what do you think this temptation is all about? How can we see a corollary that Jesus had and maybe what we might face? Well, what you just said about, well, just let me do this and then I'll be good. Is that, uh, <clears throat> is that putting God to the test? Seeking, seeking power and authority or control. You mentioned control earlier. That idea of, I'll give you all this control and all this authority. Um, sometimes we, we yearn for that. Mm -hmm. And we try to find ways to manipulate that. That's the right word. When I read that too, I thought about how many times have I done reckless things, thinking that it won't, you know, I'll be safe. I don't have to worry about that. Um, obviously, this is saying, you know, you will have, you control the angels. The angels aren't even going to let you fall. And I wonder about some teenagers that might be driving 90 miles yeah. down the road yeah. and thinking nothing can happen to me. Yeah. When I was seven or eight, I used to walk over a railroad bridge. Train never came by. I didn't worry about it. I really it never crossed my mind that I shouldn't be worried about it. There would have been no place for me to go. I would have gone. Oh, at seven or eight, it didn't occur to me to worry. Mm -hmm. It really, now it would. Now you couldn't get me on that by myself for anything under the sun because I'm smart enough to know if the train came, I couldn't run. Mm -hmm. But when I was seven or eight, I, it just didn't occur to me. And I think for a lot of teenagers, I've counseled with a lot of teenagers. Mm -hmm. I think they're more like I was at seven. It doesn't occur to them that anything terrible is going to happen to them. Well, like my son-in-law smokes, and I'm so worried about him dying and leaving his family, but he just, you know, just can't believe that anything bad's going to happen to him, even though you've got all these, you know, mm -hmm. studies that say don't do it, but I was sure it's... that train wasn't going to come. <laughs> I didn't even think about the train coming. Mm -hmm. I think Libby said to me, you didn't go to that. Did and you say did. that, Libby? I'm sure I did, no <laughs> doubt. I, mean, <laughs> well, I went over that trestle. Probably once a week for a year. Never crossed my mind. I had, didn't have to be around there. Now, today, Libby would be telling me how to do it. But then the other kids with me. I wouldn't take her to the train at all. I'd, I'd keep her totally away. <laughs> well, let's look at what else um, the devil does for Jesus. So he's, test, he's testing him by saying, you know, can make these stones bread and you're hungry, or he says, you can jump off this tower. Angels are going to hold you up. And so let's see what the last one is. Libby, would you read that for us? The devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said, and he said to him, at least I will give you if you will fall down and Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and save only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and him. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about the types of temptations Jesus faced? So, Frank, here's a good example of what you were talking about power. Mm -hmm. We want mm -hmm. to have power. 
We want to have prestige. We want to have fame. Um, mankind is the human nature is kind of like that. And uh, but Jesus said no. Now, if you notice the last line. And the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Well, this scripture is also in Luke. Turn to the next slide. Let's see what how Luke ends this story about Jesus' temptation. In Jesus's and Luke's version, it says, when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Ooh. What do you think an opportune time would be for the devil to tempt Jesus? I would have thought the turning stones to bread was definitely an opportune Absolutely. time. I mean, if that didn't work, but you think you can catch him later? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, devil, the devil's not going to quit. But his temptation was at the very, after that temptation, he began his ministry. So let's think about what were some challenges Jesus had in his ministry where the devil sitting back watching saying, hmm, this would be an opportune time. I can step in and see if I can tempt him every day. Every day. Can you think of any examples? I think about, I, I just, I'm thinking about the times when he healed people mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm sure his, he was probably tempted for his ego to get and and think you know we, we 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 believe that jesus was fully human fully god and i think about the human side of how mm -hmm. that could the attention that that i'm sure there was temptation there to to let that go to his head as it were so the healing miracles thinking about just the attention that that drew yeah you know, uh, drew from folks think about the crowds that followed him mm -hmm. how would you resist the temptation of, you know, how can I make use of this attention that I'm getting? Um, he fed 5,000 people out of one basket of fish and bread and had leftovers. And had leftovers. Um, think, I'm thinking about how I must have felt as last Sunday going into Jerusalem and all these people who have been from all over the that part of the world were in Jerusalem and they're praising him and throwing down their coats. I love the coats for, for children's <laughs> chat. That was helpful. That was good. And that was good. I was glad they didn't walk on them. I'm glad they didn't walk on them. So if we think about those examples, what are the, the things that are tempting? We said control. Pride, um, fame. I mean, these are things that we have to face too. Um, and so that it's helpful to understand that, as you said, every day, June, mm -hmm. we are faced with temptations every day. And it is a test or a trial to help us get big, stronger, and develop more character. Um, I thought it was interesting in our lesson, too. It talked about the temptations church, the church, the church has gone through. Can you think of some examples where the church had to face these tests or hmm. I think tests as well as temptations? Well, suddenly, if you go all the way back to the beginning, at first, the church was often in trouble, but then along came Constantine, mm -hmm. and suddenly the church was the in and the acceptable, and that really changed everything. I think it very well may have been harder to have withstood persecution than to suddenly being this is the right way and you follow it. Mm -hmm. Let's think about how the church has grown and changed. So the Reformation, what was that a response to? Well, 
might have been a response to the control uh, as much as other things. The authority resting in individuals. Mean, I couldn't have anything that I could read. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. One thing. Yeah, the accessibility of the gospel. Uh, the churches today are in a tremendous challenge. Attendance is down generally in most churches. Who goes to primarily is people our age. <laughs> yeah. And I look at people in their 20s. And thank God for JT and his family joining us. What an absolute. I hope we all realize what a blessing that is to the to have a young family with three and soon to be four children come and they will bring in others. And they the churches have a real challenge today as to how they will grow and how they will just keep going, not even grow, how they will maintain. I have any number of ministers that I keep in contact with. And they're really worried about their churches making it. Mm -hmm. Will they be able to keep their doors open? And since the pandemic, people got out of the habit of going. Mm -hmm. And I've had several ministers say to me, the people who came regularly before the pandemic aren't coming back many. How do I get them back? And they're really worried. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are churches that are on. I mean, these aren't your, your big churches, but churches that have less than a hundred certain churches. I have a couple of very close ministers, friends, whose churches have about 50 people on Sunday morning. They're truly worried whether or not they will be able to keep their doors open. I've said the last couple of years, we were all a good habit together with doing Wednesday Night Live and church Sundays and mm -hmm. circle and, you know, you name it. And, uh, and and do other things in, in, uh, in this church. And, and we all just flat stopped. It's how hard that was on all of us mm -hmm. that, that and we it's stopped easy everything. not to come back. Yeah. You get in the habit mm -hmm. of sleeping, or you get in the habit of going out to breakfast on a Sunday morning. You know, that might be something to look at, really, is our church membership and say, Many have come back. Who hasn't? And let's mm -hmm. see. For what it's worth, the deacons have already talked about that. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. they they identifying those people. We're worried about it. Yeah. Good. I because don't think it, so. because we recognize that's that's a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right, June. It's it's this is a real time of testing. Um, but your coming has been such such an advantageous mm -hmm. timing. Timing has been good, but that's an example of temptation for me. Not good. <laughs> but it's been such a blessing yeah. to this church because some of the bad things that could have happened didn't because you can. I think the other time in history that I was thinking about that the church I was thinking about Germany pre war mm -hmm. and one of our confessions comes out of that that time. I think about the German Christians and, and their desire, the Barman Declaration, to, to stand and say, what's happening here, this is not who we, what we profess. Um, and how that, I don't know, that, that that's a time in the church's life that I thought and was tempted, could have, and some were, some parts of that church, church were tempted to, appease. Um, I think it's interesting to look at the different confessions yeah. some periods for them. Um, which one is it I'm trying to think? It starts with Belhar. 
Bell Hart. Bell Hart out of South Africa. Out of South right. Africa. And right. we have the 1967 with right. the civil rights and right. the reunification of the church. So these times, if we think about this whole idea of being tested and proved, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. as well as something we don't really want to be part of, but it does allow us that chance in the way we respond and rely on God, how we can grow and be stronger and better. So, um, so I think we should apply this to our own lives. When is my, um, the devil see an opportune time in our lives? And as you said, June, it could be when things are going real well and we don't think we need to rely on God. It also could be times when we're really struggling and we feel disconnected from God. So um, I think he's a sneaky man, a, a sneaky <laughs> entity out there hanging around saying, hmm, is this the right time? <laughs> uh, so let's move on to this idea about testing has a value. And I want you to think about a time of trial that you've lived through. Did it prepare you for something that was to come? Did it make you stronger? Did it draw you closer to God? I thought it was interesting in our lesson how it talked about Jesus's temptation helped prepare. I wonder what, you know, how that um, perhaps having been experience the temptations from the devil but when it came back around um, in his life where people were idolizing him or he was doing miraculous things he'd already got that temptation and survived it and i bet it did make him stronger knowing that he could draw closer to god so think about your own time it's a trial did it prepare you for something to come. I think I've shared this before, but when the, my son Terrell's grandmother was dying, she said to folks in this church, what are you going to do with my children? Well, we found what we thought were good placements for two of them, but nobody wanted this little boy. He was a wild bunny. He was wild. <laughs> and uh, when you think things are going well, mm -hmm. uh, of course, the Lord had played on our heart. He was turning nine. And we were left motherless, Sandy and I, at around that age. All right, that played on us. And then we had these two older boys who, they were pretty compliant. <laughs> so we thought, well, we're pretty good at raising boys. <laughs> See? Yeah. See? There's always one that comes along. <laughs> So we took him. Three weeks into the process, we were down on our knees saying, <laughs> okay, Lord, what are we with? And so, yeah. It your life caused, would be different, different, wouldn't it? Our, our life has been very different ever since. Mm -hmm. It has opened up a whole new world for us that we would not have, uh, as a young man working in our yard now, that we would never have known. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Trail's, trail's still not fixed as we thought we would do. Fixed, eh? 
I don't understand why you would ever. <laughs> no, but you've been changed. And she and she knows that she's been known me a lot. <clears throat> yeah. I've but God changed. God has changed you all through that experience. Yeah, I never really focused on how I've changed mm. or been changed. Yeah. But I guess a lot of the work. Sandy does through biblical justice, all of that, you know, yeah. That's what came to mind when I was thinking. And I think about at the moment that I was going through it, I wasn't, I was usually in a low place or I was unhappy or I didn't see, I felt like things weren't going my way. And then through time, I was able to look back on it and realize I was changed and prepared, better prepared. Ended up happening after that. And I could not have foreseen that at the time. So for me, those are some of the learning. And it comes with age, it comes with experience and trusting to get through that. Which can be hard to do in the moment. It'd be very hard. And secondly, I, I was thinking about the drops. I think we can see it when we step back and we're watching someone we love go through it. Your heart aches for them. You want to take it on for them. But in the long run, you often see that they grow, they learn, they become a better person having survived it. Um, yeah, but it hurts to watch it go. Through. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Because we want to fix it, right, Dane? <laughs> and, 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 and the 40 days, you know, it came to an end. And so, you know, so I'm, I'm wondering when this one's going in. <laughs> Maybe 40 years. I was going to say, you're coming out <laughs> close to 40 years here, Dick. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, then I want us to think about the other part, because I never really thought about this as two different parts of the prayer. One is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that idea that it's, it balances, it has... Recognizing, do not lead us into temptation, recognizes that as humans, we're going to be tempted. We are going to have situations where we're going to be tested and have to live through trials. But deliver us from evil, it says, when we get there, Lord, I need you. I need you to help me because I'm not sure that I can do it on my own. So, um, I really like that idea of those two. Um, I like Daniel Boone's prayer. Oh, I love Daniel. Read that for us, Frank. When he faced a hungry bear, he prayed, Lord, if you can't help me, don't help that bear. <laughs> <laughs> and I think. <laughs> I really like that example and thinking about how we could put this part of the Lord's prayer into real life words. Would you go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. Here's some examples that I thought they might have mentioned that would be helpful. Uh, I love the example of the lady, uh, the person who has an annoying coworker who always says crazy and their prayer might be, Lord, don't let him say it today. But if he does, help me not to not lose my temper. <laughs> I mean, that's a real life yeah. thing. Uh, for an alcoholic, Lord, don't let my buddy offer me a drink tonight, but if he does, give me the strength to pass on. Or the overtired mother, I thought of this one. God, don't let my baby cry all night long. Does give me the patience to withstand it and not lose my cool. Mm -hmm. So can you think of some other ones we could come up with how we would make this part of the Lord's Prayer real personal to a situation? All right, Libby, I want you to do one about eating, <laughs> eating cakes. 
maybe you don't think that's a temptation. Oh, no, it is. No, I, I just give in to it. I just go in there. <laughs> well, but you're going to pray about it. I'm not going to pray, God, don't let me want that cake. No, I'm not going to. No, I'm I'm not going to ask God not to tempt me with the cake. I'm going, I'm going to ask God to not tempt me with things that are a whole lot more important to me than the cake. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, that's good. A good thing. Is that I don't okay think. to say yeah. that? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was thinking about for Olivia. Lord, please let me, please let the dessert not be cheesecake. <laughs> that's right. Oh, don't tempt them with this dessert. But if you do, just don't let it be cheesecake. That's, right. that. That's good. I've got one. Okay. Oh, raising three little girls, when I had this and this and this to do, and I couldn't get it done, and I, was, oh, I had a deadline, and you know, I'm in the house trying to do this and that and the other, and I, I just got tired. I thought, I'm going to go outside. The girls were inside and watching TV or doing something. I don't know what they were doing. I went outside. I thought, I'm just going to go outside and sit down and rest for a minute. Oh, you know, it was just dark. <laughs> so I went and sat down for just a minute and started to just deep breathe a little bit. And all of a sudden, I felt a on my head. It was a bird. <laughs> and I said, Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for feeling sorry for myself <laughs> and I went back in and washed my hair work <laughs> you never do that again <laughs> uh, you got your attention <laughs> uh, okay. I was thinking about um, if I were going to do this something important would be I agree um, Lord, please don't let them ask me to do one more thing. <laughs> but if you do, give me the strength to do it well. <laughs> or to have the courage to say no. Oh, that would be even better, yeah. right? I have got there yet. <laughs> Let's go to slide yeah. 12. He always gives you the strength to do it well. I try hard. <laughs> okay, so we're finishing up, and I want us to think about what we've learned. Think about what we've learned when we read Our Father Who Art in Heaven. What did we learn from this that helps us see that with new eyes? This is the testing. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case. Oh, you're going to be the next. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I like the inclusiveness. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we're really praying this for everybody, aren't we? Not just ourselves. It, it, it's. The language all through the prayer is is feeling like I'm I'm in church where uh -huh. we're all praying this or all of us as a nation. And I had never thought about it until I read this study that I could include Jesus too, but he's standing right there with me as I pray it. I think. Jesus is praying this prayer as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about the part, thy kingdom come, thy will be done? What did we learn from that? Mm -hmm. I wish she was here if she could tell us how she learned it was a lament. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like that part of the lament, did she? <laughs> I, 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 I never thought of it as being a revolutionary thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like that. It's a, a change, <laughs> a change in government we des desperately need, mm -hmm. and the whole world needs. Mm -hmm. How would our world be different if 
God was in control. We're seeking God's will to be done. When we pray God's will to be done, that has that has a deeper meaning now for me whenever I pray that prayer. Mm -hmm. but to, have, to have a collection of people who are all saying it all at one time, comfort. Mm -hmm. I thought of this study on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I've taken a, my normal route of walk, and, I, and there's this one beagle, and her mistress was standing out there. This is the sweetest dog I've ever known. And I've known a bunch of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just the sweetest dog. And, uh, and, and, the lady said, wouldn't the world be a better place if we were all like Clover? Mm -hmm. And I thought about this the prayer. Wow. If I could be like Clover, the world would be a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I thought about how it, it's a statement that we're not satisfied with the way things are. And I'm not sure that everybody accepts that. Um, and, and the next phrase, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. that, that's asking God. We want you to be, even though Jesus is not here like he was, we want you here now mm -hmm. amidst be done just as it is in heaven. That's... That's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. Give us this day our daily bread. It's not too much, so much more. Mm -hmm. When we drove back mm -hmm. from doing something, and the young man was already there working in the yard. Sandy's always got several questions, and one of them is, have you had anything to eat? Mm -hmm. he's, had a rough, he's had a rough time several months. God doesn't forget that human, and we have human needs, too. Um, in the Lenten study that's Matthew 25, there was Wednesdays and it was about the beggar bowl in time mm -hmm. where the, what kind of priest were they? Buddhist, I think it was Buddhist. Buddhist priests who will walk around with an empty bowl and mm -hmm. they rely on mm -hmm. the generosity of others. Mm -hmm. It's called the begging bowl, but the prayer was really nice because it talked about, you know, if my bowl is full, who can I, Share it with who's who's that? So. Mm -hmm. All right, now I have to say the whole thing to know the next part. Forgive us. For <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> forgive me, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> forgive us as we forgive others. What? Oh, that was a revelation for me. What did you learn in that one? I'm behind. <laughs> Perhaps I'm behind. I'm forgiving. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's just freeing. It's it's freeing to <laughs> having studied a little bit. That it's always been a hard one for me, in the sense that how can you forgive all I'm doing and going on and myself, but. And, and I know this is only really only part of it, but it's God's generosity and, and forgiving. But you mean all I got to do is forgive <laughs> somebody for what they said? <laughs> I mean, what difference does that make? And it really makes me sad to when I think back to some of the really nice people I know. Um, at work and all, but they they could not forgive one certain thing that happened. And 
But if you want to be forgiven, you have to first forgive. And that is, I think, many people have to learn that. And for many of us, the hardest thing is to forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. So how does that keep us from receiving God's forgiveness if we can't forgive ourselves? Already forgiven you. Mm -hmm. And that you're carrying this burden that he's really taking you. And then of course today, lead us not tempted to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Any reflections on what you learned today? No excuses, Dean. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm picking on Cheryl. Cheryl, you're <laughs> 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 A lot of things that are just, I think what I appreciate from the lesson is a lot of up on the big temptations, mm -hmm. big things, but really it's about what we do. It's all of the things that happen throughout the day. They add up over the course mm -hmm. of and, uh, that, that, that struck me. I'm, I'm glad to know the James passage mm -hmm. uh -huh. puts things straighter mm -hmm. for me well i like to think about my time here on earth as an opportunity for me to my soul to grow so the trials i experience and live through um i don't want to waste my life here on earth by having things too easy. I'll turn over to you, Pastor Frank. Okay, so we're going to close with a couple of things. One, we're going to just we're going to do just some simple meditation, and I'm going to close your eyes and to think. You don't need to say anything out loud as I go through this. Just to reflect on what I'm saying. Um, and then after that, we'll we'll share the Lord's Prayer again. But so if you will just close your eyes and, and listen to this reflection and, and, and reflect. Do not bring us to the time of trial. Reminds us that testing is universal in human life. It's part of the fabric of every human being. The test may be the annoying behavior of a family member or colleague. It may be the commute to work. It may be the line at the supermarket. It may be a request to bend the rules. Or it may be the desire to cheat enough to lessen your taxes or to raise an evaluation. What temptations or tests are you facing? Lift them up to God in silence. but rescue us from the evil one, reassures us that we can be helped and that we can count on God for victory at any place of testing. Once we recognize the things that are before us, we are better able to seek help and the strength we need to face them. This petition fits all human beings, all sizes and all ages. It recognizes that we are sometimes very frail, but that in God's mercy, there is strength to emerge triumphant from our time of trial. In a time of silence, give thanks to God for God's mercy.
conclude our time in prayer, I'm going to invite us to say the Lord's Prayer in a responsive way, but with some space in between each phrase. So I'll say a phrase and invite you to repeat it, and we'll have a moment of silence, and then we'll work our way through. But as we repeat each phrase, let's reflect on that phrase and what it means to us in our life of faith. So repeat after me. Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. <clears throat> As we forgive our debtors. As, As we, we forgive, forgive our, our debtors. debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 I want to thank Beth for taking the lead. Weeks. It's been great. We appreciate your attentiveness and detail, and thank you for leading us. We really That's enjoyed it. Thank you both. Appreciate you. Thank all of you for participating. We appreciate it. And this is maybe might lead to some sermons on this maybe this summer. Thought about that maybe. So appreciated that. I'm waiting to see the bulletin. I know. I know. <laughs> Palm Sunday and Easter, it's kind of a big day, so I didn't decide, I I decided not to rock the boat too much, but 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 it'll happen. <laughs> so the tables like this, and I think this would work fine for us Sunday morning for Sunday school. Yeah, and sitting this way. Uh -huh. We a little bit closer 